Inside of You is brought to you by Sonos. Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know how much I love Sonos. I have so many devices in my house. I, it goes on. Uh, it's a company that I've wanted to, I wanted them to be a sponsor for many years. And finally it happened. And I'm so delighted because I just love this product. And uh, I have them all over my house. With Sonos, you can play a song in every diff every room of your house, a different song. So if you have the kids and you want the kids who want to listen to Barney or whatever the hell they're <laughs> listening to, they could listen to that. Um, I could listen to whatever. I could listen to uh, Hendrix upstairs. Uh, you know, the wife, I'm not married, but if I had one, she could listen to Adele. Well, the kids listening to the Smiths downstairs? Uh, that's what my kids would be listening to, yeah. the Smiths, baby. Yeah. That's exactly right. But uh, Sonus is pretty incredible. Uh, the design is awesome. Instead of having these giant speakers and uh, receivers, get rid of them because all you need is Sonus. One Sonus speaker sounds better than all that stuff. Um, and today we're talking about Rome. Sonos Rome is the ultra portable smart speaker that allows you to bring the Sonos experience everywhere you go. Rome weighs less than a pound and it's premium. Durable design makes it perfect for the home and for on the go. When you're home, Rome connects to your Wi Fi network and the rest of your Sonos system and then automatically pairs with your phone on Bluetooth when you're on the go for a seamless experience. Using automatic true play tuning, Rome smartly adapts to your surroundings and whatever you're listening to and creates sound that's astonishingly detailed and perfectly balanced. Control Rome using the app Apple AirPlay 2 or your voice with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. With Sonos, you can start with one speaker and expand your system over time like I have. I have, I think, nine units, uh, nine devices. All Sonos speakers connect over Wi-Fi, so you can group speakers in different rooms and play music throughout your home. I can't tell you how much I love this enough. Try Sonos, and it's so easy, guys. You just go to Sonos, S-O-N-O-S dot com to learn more. That's Sonos dot com to learn more. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. I am Michael Rosenbaum. And uh, this is Ryan Teas right That's next to me, across from me. Cross. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing all right. Great. I'm uh, still recovering from the new year. Yep. I'm trying to stick to my plan. Yep. Uh, I, I, I have to admit, I had one <clears throat> soda in, in 16 days. <clears throat> I had uh, one cigarette in 16 days. Mm -hmm. Zero vapes. Mm -hmm. No cookies. Very, very few snacks. Mm -hmm. And I've lost 10 pounds. Already? Yes. Jesus. I know. Just by a little exercise and changing your diet, you see what happens? I'm telling you, man. I don't know. Um, 10 pounds. Unless there's something else going on. I mean, I lost 10 pounds, so <laughs> God forbid. But uh, very. Uh, I'm just trying to stick with it, man. I'm trying. People always like, by the 11th or by the end of the month, you'll be off it just like everybody else. New Year's resolutions, they go out the window by the end of January. I'm like, fuck mm -hmm. off. I am going to continue this. Well, you got all year to do it. <laughs> I know that's the hard part. I got all year to freaking do it. Hey guys, thanks for listening. If you are digging the podcast, if you're here for Angie Harmon, or if you like, you know, listening to all of these other people that have uh, come on the podcast, I'd love you to just do this: to subscribe and write a review. If you write a review, whether you're on Spotify or Apple, it helps tremendously. Helps the show so much. And follow us on our handles, Ryan. What are our handles? Uh, at inside of you pod on Twitter, at inside of you podcast, Instagram, and face. That's correct. That's correct. So, you know, I get a lot of letters and people really enjoy the show. So I hope uh, I hope that you are enjoying it. I hope you're having a good week. If you're driving to work or if you're at home, shut the door, take an hour off, hang out with me and Ryan for a bit and uh, our guest. I think that would be nice. I uh, also want you to know that uh, my band Sunspin has a concert virtual. You can come see us virtually so you don't have to leave the house January 29th. Two shows, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. I'd really love some of you to come that haven't seen the show. Please come support the band. Uh, you can get tickets by going to sunspin.com or stageit.com and type in sunspin. Great prizes, Zooms. We're giving away like lunch boxes, uh, sunspin lunch boxes with tons of stuff. Um, also, I want to thank all my patrons out there. If you want to join Patreon and give back to the podcast, there's a lot of perks and prizes and things that we do, and it really helps the podcast. So thank you for joining. A lot of people have been joining Patreon lately. Uh, just go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash inside of you and join. I'll write you a message right after thanking you. And um, 
Also, if you need any merch, where do they go, Ryan? They go to the the merch store inside of you online <laughs> store. That one. And there's tons of tumblers inside of you. There's Smallville lunch boxes. There's I have Smallville scripts signed by me. Oh. Uh, anyway, lots of great stuff. So go to the inside of you online store. <clears throat> limited supply. And uh, I just want to again thank everybody for for tuning in. Happy New Year. I hope you're enjoying it. we got some great guests coming up. We've had some great guests already this year. Tom Welling, Jensen Ackles, Brandon Routh. Um, it's been great. It's been great. And I hope you guys continue to support the podcast, even if you don't like the guests. Maybe you just like finding out something about the guests that you didn't know. You know what? I think it's time. I think we get into mm. – uh, she's a, a lovely woman. She's honestly a fantastic human being. I've known her for a while. She's got a lot to talk about, and I really, uh, I really enjoyed her. So let's get inside of Angie Harmon. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Angie Harmon. I mean, I might as well have had. Robert De Niro on the podcast. <laughs> you are you are as amazing and the most awesome woman I probably have ever met. It couldn't have been more difficult to get you on this podcast. I'm so sorry. Wait, Nelson. Okay, hang on. Wait. It's, it's, is, it's gonna happen. I want this, this in is there. Gonna happen. This okay. this is good. A lot of people wanted you on this podcast. They're like, when's Angie thank Harmon you. coming on? Yes. Aw, thank you. What's thank that? You so much. What's that giant um, cotton ball above your head? That's it's my hat. You know like <laughs> you what look, do you think? It's a fantastic hat. I think you look fantastic. <laughs> it's my it's my feather chandelier, as every proper southern woman has in her red lacquered office. My God, that's a good office. You have a good office. You're very. Are you meticulously like neat? Oh God, I try to be, and no. If you could actually see what this room looks like and why I'm sweating. <laughs> why are you sweating? Well, first of all, because I get, I don't know why I, I, it, it's just, it never works out. Like I had to run across town over here. Then I had to run across town over there. Then I had to run back over here. And I was upstairs, like trying to put my face on and that was a disaster. And then I came downstairs and then my computer wouldn't work. And then I was in the kitchen and you're like, no, no phone on the computer. And I was like, Oh God. <laughs> But here we are. <laughs> Yesterday, folks, uh, Angie emailed me 30 minutes before and said, you're going to kill me, but I have to pick up my daughter or something. I don't remember what it was. but Yes, I, that's exactly what it was. Are you? Do you feel like you're a sort of a frantic, like always everything's last minute and you're, you know, you just, you've just been like, some people like personalities are like that. I, I get like that. Like where I, I have so much going on that I forget things. I don't write them down. I'm in and out the door and I'm just in it. It's just, is it, you do that? And it's, and it's, it's never a clean exit. Like you get out the door, you get in the car, you realize you've forgotten three things. You got to go back in, never a clean exit. And yes. And I really try to be organized. And unless somebody hands me a call sheet every morning of like the dry cleaners and the laundry and the grocery store, and this, I've been out of vanilla creamer for four days. I mean, my coffee has literally sucked every morning because I don't have my vanilla creamer. <laughs> Do you have structure in your life? Do you feel like you need structure in your life? Like when you're on Rizzoli and Isles or when you're on Law and Order, you have like a, a you know, a plan. A, a, you, this is your day and you need that. Do you go crazy if you're, if you, if you don't have that? I mean, I definitely need that. I would love to have that. Um, but I can't pay anybody enough to do that for me. <laughs> so I just kind of wing it all. You know what it's like? This is funny. A friend of mine said this the other day. So do you remember the movie Better Off Dead? Of course I remember Better Off Dead. I knew you would. I knew you would. Come babe. on, Okay, 80s. so listen. So remember when he's at the top of the mountain and he has no idea how to ski? <laughs> His yeah. friend's like, okay, look, you're going to go down this real fast. <laughs> and if something gets in your way, just turn. That's kind of how I go through every day <laughs> right now at this point in my life. You need somebody to tell you what to do and you're going to do it. Correct. Just give me the call sheet. This is what we do from this time. And this is what we do from this time. And somebody <laughs> needs to do my makeup and hair, of course. And then, you know, I need my wardrobe picked out and I'm set. I'm golden. You don't have a full-time assistant. You are, I mean, come on. You have to. I, I mean, know. how do you and not? I mean, 
and I don't have nannies and I don't have any of that crap. Like well, it is just me. Well, how old are the kids now? Well, Finn is 17 and a senior. And then Avery is 16 and a sophomore. And Emery is 12 and in seventh grade. So it's not like I really need a nanny, you know, <sighs> per se. But I mean, the girls are, they're so epic. They are just the most legendary human beings that you have ever met in your entire life. Really? You're not dealing with any problems as they're in high school now because I, there was always issues in my family and most people's families. You don't have to deal with, you know, bad behavior, unsatisfactory. I always had on my report cards, use, use for unsatisfactory. <laughs> Michael's behavior is unsatisfactory. Use. We had use and S's. Satisfactory, unsatisfactory. My parents had meetings all the yeah, time. Yeah, and there's a lot of gray in between there. You know, <laughs> there's a lot. I think there was another letter for the gray area, like an N. Yeah. Like <laughs> N decided. I don't know. Remember what it was. So I mean, how do you do that? How do you work and like keep three kids going and I deal have, with? I haven't. I haven't worked since Rizzoli. I mean, well, it just I haven't. I told the girls that I would never leave them again the way that I had to do with that. And I've kept my promise. Really? And so, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was, I mean, when I started Rosalie and Isles, Emery was in diapers. And when I, you know, got back, she was seven. So, wow. Is there a lot yeah. of, is there a lot of guilt in that? Like, even though you have to work and make oh. a living, do you feel like, gosh, I'm not there for them? Yeah, I did for a while. Um, you know, it's, it's, and I would fly back and forth across the country as much as I could. And, you know, obviously I was, they were with me for the summers. I mean, in Los Angeles, they have a great sort of, you know, multicultural, they have like, you know, their Charlotte and then they have their LA and, and, um, but yeah, there's definitely a ton of guilt that was attached with that. Now have I made up for it in space? Yes. Cause I'm an awesome mom. <laughs> and, and, and literally, I mean, like I was, I was telling Finley, <laughs> you of all people you're gonna love this so i was telling finley my 17 year old um like my 16 year old went to the beach with her boyfriend this weekend and you know my 12 year old like spent the night out at her friends all this past weekend it was a long weekend as you know so i kind of got a front row seat with finley and you know watching just who she is and how she handles herself and how she handles her friends and how she handles her boyfriend who I adore, who is very darling. And, um, it was just really, really wonderful. And so I told her that I sent her a text. <laughs> I actually said, Hey, I was talking to my therapist this morning. <laughs> and I just wanted you to know that this is what I said and you know, how awesome you are and how proud of you I am. And you know, if you were my age, I would totally want to hang out and I would want, I would seek your counsel if I had a problem. Like I would look to you for advice. That's how highly I think of you. And so, and Finley wrote back, oh mommy, that's so sweet. And then she wrote, girl, G-U-R-L, you know we'd be BFFs, but I know we'd get in a lot of shit together. <laughs> What? Your 16-year-old daughter said this to you? 17. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> we would get in shit together? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do, do you, and, I, wow. and, I, and I mean, oh, like, that makes me so happy because she, she's got a great sense of humor. She totally, I mean... I'm kind of like a high-strung, high-stakes type of person. And, you know, my girls know, like, if you can laugh... Life is going to be a lot easier. And so, you know, I mean, we've laughed at a funeral before. I mean, we just, they go through so much as kids, as teenagers. And I'm just like, girls, come on. And so we do that. Like we, we use humor in a lot of things. And, and I just answer her with, yeah. And that's not any of that misdemeanor stuff. That's two to five right there. <laughs> but don't you have boundaries because. You know, my parents, my parents were the extremes uh, and the other side where they were extremely strict. I was always grounded. I couldn't confide in them. I couldn't it trust. Them. I didn't trust them. I didn't, you know, I just really didn't like them very much growing up. And yeah. you seem to have this great relationship with your kids. Do you think there's ever a line that's crossed? Like, I don't want to know this information. This is too much information. Or they feel comfortable like, oh, oh I'm going to drink. We, we're going to go drink at the Harmon house. <laughs> okay. See, and that's a lot of balancing out because... You know, here's the thing. It's like, 
we both know what we were doing at their age, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, I absolutely have that relationship with my daughters. It's like, I want to know where you are. I want to know what you're doing. Are you drinking? What's happening? I want to know whose car they're in. And, you know, before it was kind of just like, Oh my God, I don't want to know any of this. But now, you know, they've, they've gotten to be super responsible. Um, and it was kind of, so I, everyone's going to think I'm such a crappy parent now, but I'll put it to you this way. All I could remember was like, remember those kids in high school that their parents were so strict, they couldn't do anything. And they went to college and they went berserk and like, yep. it never <laughs> ended well. Well, now yeah. imagine if you're a girl, so it never ended well. And, you know, it, so with my girls, we just, we have open lines of communication. They know what the rules are. They know what the boundaries are. And we have many of them, you know, and they know that this isn't like the party house because it's just not, I mean, that's just not what I'm into. I mean, there right. are so many horribly dangerous things that can happen to them just on a daily basis outside of, you know, of oh, right now we're going to have a you know big party at the Harmon House. <laughs> so, but I do appreciate the relationship that we have because there is an honesty there that I did not have, you know, with my parents, neither did you. And I think had, I I just think it would have been different had I been able to know that, you know, if something had happened and I needed to call my parents that I wouldn't get in trouble, I wouldn't be judged. I wouldn't be grounded. I wouldn't be in that stuff. And that's, you know, the girls, they know that. Inside of You is brought to you by Helix Sleep. Uh, I'd say sleep is probably the number one thing you can do for your body for the most part, wouldn't you say? I think if you don't get a good night's sleep, you're effed because, I mean, how many hours in your lifetime do you sleep? More hours than you're awake? Isn't it? it probably. It, it's a pretty large percentage of your life. It's a large percentage. In bed. It is. And the bed you choose is huge because you wake up, you don't want to have backaches like me. You don't want to have fatigue. You didn't sleep. So picking out the the best mattress for you is important. And, you know, today it's not easy to sleep. You got the politics, you got pandemics, your your love life, you know, uh, any other drama that you can think of. But uh, it's hard to sleep. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete. I can do it. I have ADD. I I took it. It's so easy. It matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot, and even a Helix Plus mattress for plus-size sleepers. Yep, I took the Helix quiz. I was matched to a medium mattress. It's like porridge. You know, medium was just right for me, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's it's an incredibly comfortable bed, and you, you all should try it. Uh, I have friends that have a Helix bed. Bryce, mm. Bryce, my producer, has a Helix bed and loves it. It's been he's had one for about a year and a half or so. Nice, and really digs it. And I'm like, well, they're a sponsor now. Oh, he's cool. like, well, great because I like them. <laughs> uh, it's been awesome getting messages from so many of you uh, who also found the Helix mattress of your dreams. So if you're looking for a mattress, just take the quiz, order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. That's right, shipped for free. You don't need to go to a mattress store ever again. Thank God. Just go to Helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash inside. By the way, uh, it was the best overall mattress pick of 2020 by Mm. GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix is for real. Uh, So Helix, sleep.com slash inside. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. You got a 10-year warranty to try this out for 100 nights. Wait, what was that? And they have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. Helix is also offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash inside. That's helixsleep.com slash inside for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Inside of You is brought to you by BetterHelp. Boy, uh, I'll tell you, if it's one sponsor that I could really relate to, and uh, not that I don't relate to all the others, I do, but BetterHelp Online Therapy uh, I'll tell you, it's changing lives. It's helping people all across the world. So many of my friends are doing it, using it. Ryan, you use better help. I do. How's your therapy going? It's going very well. Yeah. I feel like you got a good therapist now and you're, uh, you're happy. I, yeah, I am. I do. Uh, yeah, it's great. 
And you use it uh, at least every month. Yeah, no, uh, once a week. Once uh, a week. Once a week, I have a video chat session, and you know the uh, yeah, and the the text chat is always open. So if there's any any issues, or uh, I love someone's it. got a lesson for you, then yeah, it's great. So you just text them. Mm-hmm. You know, people think you should wait until things are are unbearable to go to therapy, and that's could, that couldn't be further from the truth. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. Sometimes we just wait till everything's just hit the fan, and then we go, oh, I need therapy. If you feel like you're starting to lose a little control, if you feel like you're starting to feel that depression, anxiety, you just need someone else to talk to, someone objectively, better help online therapy, folks. Many people think therapy's for so-called crazy people, (laughs) but therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to control them not avoid them. And we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of normal life. Uh, That's wrong. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should be focusing on our minds just as much, and I I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, BetterHelp has customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. I like to see them. So does Ryan. Yeah, it's It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Inside of you listeners get 10% off by going to betterhelp.com slash inside. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Do yourselves a favor. Get some help. Inside of you is brought to you by Home Medics Massager. Uh, Home Medics makes some great product. Uh, I've got back issues. I, I feel like I'm getting, I feel older than I should feel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they sent me this massage chair. It's like a massage chair. You could actually lie down. It could massage mm-hmm. you. You could sit up. And it's it's strong. It's not one of these weak things that you get at like a Target, I'm not going <laughs> to say the name, but uh, they sent me some product and I was really impressed. I had so much comfort in uh, using their product. Uh, you got to try Homedics, guys. They've got a whole line of massage products from a massage gun with built-in hot and cold technology to a massage cushion that lets you lie down or sit up depending on your therapeutic needs. See? Uh, they also have a three-in-one Foot massager with vibration so powerful it loosens the muscles in your legs and lower back. I just got that, and I'm going to try it. I haven't tried that one because I just got it, but I'm going to try it, and you should try it with me. By the way, they have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Really? If you can believe that. I mean, I like to look at that stuff. I like to see those things. A-plus? Yeah. That's pretty damn good. I never got an A-plus. No, I've never had a C-plus. Look, whether you're dealing with chronic pain like me or just looking to help your muscles recover from a workout, we've got good news. Right now, if you go to homemedics, that's H-O-M-E-D-I-C-S dot com slash inside and use the promo code inside, you'll receive a free portable phone sanitizer when you buy $100 or more in massage products. That's a $60 value. That's H-O-M-E-D-I-C-S dot com slash inside. And use the promo code inside for your free portable phone sanitizer with a $100 massager purchase. Uh, Home Medics, they make some great product and you should check them out. Now, all right, so go back. So let's go back to little Harmon. Let's go back to little (laughs) Angie. So what was it like growing up like in, in Texas and... I mean, what were you doing as a kid? Were you a good kid? Were, but you said you didn't really, you couldn't confide in your folks. What was that like growing up? Well, you first. Well, I tell you, it was <clears throat> it was a lot of dysfunction. I, I don't think my parents really sort of cared exactly where I was. I had surrogate uh, families, mm-hmm. like my friends' yeah. families were, became my families. I'd stay at their house a lot. They'd be like, did your mom know you're here? I'm like, she don't care. Oh my god! Well, no, no. I mean, it's not like my mom didn't. I don't think she. She, of course, she cared. It was just. It was kind of like my brother told me. He was like, you know, it was kind of like you didn't exist. <gasps> like, like not exist, but you like no one paid attention to you. My oh, brother right, said yeah. this to me not long ago, and I and I go, wow, you saw that too. It was the first time somebody had acknowledged it. It was like, yeah, you just kind of went by, and they're like, oh, and they just didn't pay attention to you. 
And were, what were your parents like? I mean, were, did they pay attention to you? Um, well, no. I mean, not in the way that you want them to. You know what I mean? Like, like we wanted. But I will tell you this. I have a lot of kids that stay at my house. Like, I'm a uh, surrogate yeah. mom to a lot, to a lot of kids. And I love that. I love that that's my role. I love that they put me in that position. And it's not necessarily because, you know, their home life is so terrible. I mean, my home life, it, you know, was terrible. And that's really all I want to, you know, get into on that. Really, growing but up, like, growing horrible. up was, growing up was horrible. Horrible. Like, horrible. I, I mean, statistically speaking, I should be hooking in some trailer park, like addicted to math. Like that's, you know, statistically speaking, wow, that's where I should be. But I just decided, I don't know. That's not very pretty. And I'll go <laughs> do this. Well, how do you get out of that though? You don't have to talk about that per se, but like, like what, what, how did you get out of that then? Because I got out of it by, you know, I remember I did a, I did a play in high school and somebody said, acknowledged me for the first time in my life. Like, Oh, you're funny. And that's all I needed. Some attention. Yeah. And you and I, I think are yeah. a lot alike in that thing. We, we, we love attention and we're outgoing and fun. And we're also drain the shit out of ourselves. Probably where we're exhausted after going to a party. Cause everybody's like, Oh my God, Angie's so delightful and vivacious and just full of life. And, and then you get home and you're like, Oh my God, I want to die. <laughs> yeah, kinda, <laughs> but I'll tell you, I mean, it took me a long, it took me a long time to, to get to, to appreciate not only what I didn't have, but what I also have now. Right. Because at the end of the day, Michael, I mean, it taught us to be who we are. And, you know, right now, I'm, I'm really, you know, kind of fascinated and enjoying who I am. I mean, I, it, was, it was so hard for so long. I mean, let's not forget, like, while I was shooting Rizzoli, I was going through a divorce. You know, there was all kinds of problems there. My best friend killed himself. There, You know, it was just, and all it was was just like, you know, we had like a couple of just really horrible people on that set that were always just like creating problems. So it was like I would go to work and there would just be so many problems and so many horrible things to deal with. And then I would fly home and then there would be so many problems and so many horrible things to do. And it just. How did you not implode? Did you implode? Oh, I did. I did. And how so? How did you do that? Because you go to therapy like I do. How did you yep. how did you navigate? How did you what were the things you noticed about yourself that you didn't like during that period of time? Oh gosh. I, I mean, I was I had zero patience. I was so depressed. Um, you know, at when it, it just it, it was like it was like this little box just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And to be honest, I you know I really feel like being like Jane Rizzoli, you know, saved my life in a in a very profound way because I could get to work and just Angie would just disappear, and then Jane would take over, which I know sounds so wackadoo, but that's just what happened. Yeah, that's, you know, I mean, I, I think it's a really wonderful thing when you have a character. I was lucky enough, you know, at the end there to be with, you know, some very nurturing, like when Jan Nash came on board, that was the most nurturing, most wonderful human being. And I mean, our entire like cast and crew were like, you know, beaten children that were cowering in the corner. And she's just, you know, I call her the Janda because she's like a big panda bear and she's just so loving and kind and sweet and supportive and collaborative and all of those things. And as we know, you know, certain you know, there are a lot of people in our business that aren't like that well who, who like uh, you don't have to say who but like what caused such a dysfunctional family within the this the filming of Rizzoli and Isles like where the crew would cower on a corner that's that's dramatic that's well we had I mean we had a, a real a, like there was a person that was in charge that was really really dysfunctional and then I think um it, it was I think it was just jealousy like I think that's just all it boils down to that's Which at the end of the day, it's, you know, it, that's their problem, you know, and, and when you're people like us and you, hey, and isn't this great? And we're so blessed. And look, we, we get to pretend for a living and, oh my gosh, and my character always wins and I'm super tough and look at my gun and yay, yay, yay. And like, how, like, where is the problem in that? I don't know. I think, I don't know. I just think some people just can't, 
they just can't see what they have. And so they're never, there's always this hole that they're trying to fill and it never gets full. Well, they always say that if you're not happy before you become really successful or famous, you're never going to be happy. Like in, in terms yeah. of what you have to really work on. In other words, money and fame isn't going to make you happy. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, and I will say, um, you know, I, I think there are definitely people that become actors. I mean, hello, reality shows. There are definitely people that become actors, not because they love acting. Like I became an actor because I love it. You know, I wanted to go to Juilliard. I couldn't even like, we had zero money. There was no chance I was going. I didn't even take an SAT or an ACT, which is what like my girls are doing now. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I didn't really do this one. <laughs> Where's the nanny? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um, it, it, oh. like, like the nanny you know? is just going to be brilliant, you know. Anyway, no, it's yeah. a, okay, <laughs> but like, I, I think that some people get into our business because they just want to be famous, and that's not fulfilling. You know what I mean? Like, if you become an actor just because you want to be famous, then you're just kind of dialing it in for all of the fun part, and then you show up when when it, it's just. I don't know. I've seen so many people like that. And it's it's sad, really, because we are truly some of the luckiest people on the planet. I mean, we get paid to pretend. I know. And it's the best. It is. By the way, I mean, you I mean, you, how old were you when you started modeling? Oh, my we have a picture of me in a car seat. <laughs> like like in like the Kmart like newspaper thing. <laughs> uh-huh. And your who was it? Who was your mom? Very influential in that she wanted you to be a model. She was actually. Um, I do often. Sorry, this keeps. Um, yeah, I, I do really, really feel like it was God's divine hand in my life. Um, because yeah, I mean, she was the one that entered me into the seventeen cover model contest. And to be fair, you know, it's not like I was going to get a car. I mean, we didn't have any money. I went to like the wealthiest school in Dallas and, you know, and so to be fair, I won the cover contest. So I won a car. So that's how I got one. I mean, I just see God's hands in so many things right. in, in my life, you know, and, and it, I don't know. I think that's why my faith is so strong. And I think, you know, it's just kind of, um, I don't know. It's just, he's just where it's at. No, I mean, so you go to church. And every we've had this conversation before. Yeah, we have. You go to church every Sunday? Um, I do, but because of the virus, we can't go. So I watch it. Oh, and you, you know what? You should watch Bishop T.D. Jakes. You would love him. Bishop? T.D. Jakes. T. He's D. at the Jakes. Potter's house in Dallas. And like, I just get on there and I mean... I love that man so much. He's a good speaker. Never, he, he speaks from the heart. Oh, yeah, but he's so awesome. And he doesn't preach at you. He preaches to you. And you can tell, I mean, like this man, he's a very, very wise man. And he just, he's in our business. Like he works with um, Tyler Perry a ton. I'm a Jew. Does it matter? Can I still listen to him? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good to know. I, you, yeah. you could have said, oh, you're a Jew. Yeah, that's not going to work out. <laughs> First of all, what jackass says that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, there are people that say that, you know, well, oh, yeah, Bishop's, Bishop, yeah, he's not right for you, Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, no. But then, you know what? Then I No, I think that you got to check him out on your own. And one of my favorite things is, like, he'll say something, like, super profound, and he'll be, and he'll go, y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. Let me come over here. And he'll go <laughs> over to that side. And he's, like, on a, you know, a stage. I mean, I'll check it out. Yeah, he's awesome. He really is. Hey, how hard was it uh, becoming such a famous model and, you know, being at the top, you know, the top, really? I mean, you were doing all the huge magazines and the huge shoots. You were one of the big models of all time. And I have to think that, it, I mean, it looks so glamorous and fun, but it, it probably wasn't all the time, was it? Well, first of all, I have to say, I do not consider myself a success as a model, you know, I consider like Linda, Christie, Naomi, and Cindy, and Claudia, and Stephanie. That was the success. But you were a big model. And I was with them, like in the same stuff as them, but I was never that tier, in my opinion. Well, but you don't you have know, to compare like, yourself. But you, 
Right. You don't have to compare yourself to them, but you could say I had a lot of success in modeling. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Yes. Correct. I had a lot of success as, as modeling. And to be honest, I wish I would have, oh God, don't kill me or judge me. I was one of those girls that was pretty, but didn't know she was pretty. No, but that's like, the I, best. That's the best kind. Oh, you sweet thing. Like I look back at those things now and I look at Finley and, you know, my daughters and I'm like, Oh my God, y'all are so stunning. And I look at those, you know, people send me stuff on social media all the time. And I look at the shoots that I did and the places that I, I mean, like I, I was on the great wall of China with Valentino. And there you Shalom, go. Right. I mean, you can't make that up. That's amazing. I was on the Concord with Kate Moss and Sting. And I mean, it, all of that stuff. What? I, I just, Yes. That's a, how was so Sting? Funny. How was Sting? I'll tell you when I met him because I, I mean, oh my god, how much do you love that guy? When I met him, it was in like some nightclub, and he clearly was not interested in like meeting, you know, fangirling models or whatever. And I what? totally respected that, but it was just like, what? And, you know, because one of my friends introduced me as like his biggest fan. He's like, what? Get out of here! And then like, and I'm just like, oh. And then that was kind of it. Which it's fine, right. but, you know, you 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 expect him to be like some profound, like you know. So you weren't like stung. Us. You weren't stung. I was not stung. Yeah, because you know, I didn't expect him to be like us. <laughs> right, right, right. But flying oh, on the God. flying on the Concord. I mean, were these great experiences? Because I always hear a lot of stuff about modeling and your agents are always like, "Oh, um, Katie, you need to lose ten pounds, or you need to do this," and it's. It's very hard and it could be, and a lot of people go through a lot of shit. And I'm just wondering if you ever had to go yeah. through that stuff. I never heard any of that kind of stuff, but I think that's because that was just how I was naturally. Um, but, you know, yeah, we, I definitely, I had a girl friend that died um, of an eating disorder. I had, you know, um, you know, yeah, I mean, but I think, I don't know. I just, I just wish, like when I look back on my life, I wish I would have appreciated it more when I was in it. Don't you know? we all? Don't we all? It's like you look at these moments and these pictures and you're like, I don't remember having a, as great of a time as I remember. Maybe because I wasn't yeah. as present. My problem is I'm not as present. It's hard for me to be present. I'm always, my mind just is going a million miles an hour. Are you able to do that now and experience things and kind of go, I'm blessed, I'm grateful, look at this moment, take it in? Are you able to do that more? Well, yeah, because now I'm medicated. <laughs> <laughs> are you really? Absolutely. Are you kidding? I'm a single mom with three daughters. Yeah. <laughs> There's an anti-anxiety in there somewhere. Totally. Uh, yes. By the way, I you know I take an anti-anxiety thing too. Yeah. And I just it's, started. It's necessary. It. I mean, it's just, especially, and you know, I'm kind of on like the tail end of the things that, you know, you know it's like, it, it's just all of the, and I, and I had this conversation with Finley, actually, I said, you know, it can't be easy being the oldest. It, it cannot be easy being the first one to go through all of this stuff, you know, because as she goes through it, I go through it. And, you know, I have only my experience to go off of and only my fears for her. And, you know, it's not like I had like the healthiest childhood. So I'm constantly trying to, you know, not do what I know, but allow that super fierce, loyal, um, passionate person that I am to be, but balance, you know, I mean, it's tough. It is tough. By the way, how I, is you it? Need come, you need to come spend a week here and, <laughs> and share it with us. I you would love it. I would love it. I love. I love kids. I love you. I mean, I think it'd be hilarious. Nothing it else would be, would be so hilarious. Fun. It would be a, a fun time. And then afterwards, would I leave saying, "I'm I'm glad I don't have any kids. I'm glad." I don't you have kids. you yep. You or will, I would. Because, say, go ahead. Because, well, that's the thing, though, is that that now that they're teenagers, you know, it's it's a different way of communicating. It's a, you know, you can be sarcastic. You can be funny. You can you know, and. I'm not going to pretend like I never curse. I never do. I do all the time. Every day I wake up and I'm like, I'm not going to curse today. I'm not going to curse, you know, and then who knows what happens. And there just this barrage of, you know, naughty words. 
you know what you should do is it's it's kind of fun now. I hang out with a couple of a couple of my friends are Mormons. Uh, John Heater from Napoleon Dynamite. He was Napoleon Dynamite. Name drop. But uh, he he does this thing where he doesn't really swear. So he'll be he'll say, "That's effing ridiculous." <laughs> so I say effing, or if I go, "Ah, oh, what a instead of what a dick, I'm like, what a d." And it's just so stupid. It's funny, and it makes me want to do that more than swear. Yes, I swear. The other day, I did something, and and Emery, my youngest, is, was in the car, and I just went, "Oh, f bomb." <laughs> <laughs> See, that's funnier than the actual word. It is. Inside of you is brought to you by Geico. Geico makes life easy, Ryan. It really does. How so? Well, you know, whether you rent your home, you own your home, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. you, you know, that's the biggest hurdle is paying your mortgage and you have, but you have all these other payments, your auto policy and your, so what if I told you Geico has this bundling policy? So you bundle your homeowners or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's so easy. Why don't you want to make your life easy? You do want to make it easy. Um, Geico easy. And the thing you do is you just go to Geico.com, you get a quote, and you see how much you can save. It's Geico easy. Go visit Geico.com and save today. That's Geico.com. Inside of You is brought to you by Sonos. Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know how much I love Sonos. I have so many devices in my house. I, it goes on. Uh, it's a company that I've wanted to I wanted them to be a sponsor for many years, and finally it happened, and I'm so delighted because I just love this product, and uh, I have them all over my house. With Sonos, you could play a song in every diff every room of your house, a different song. So if you have the kids and you want the kids who want to listen to Barney or whatever the hell they're <laughs> listening to, they could listen to that. Um, I could listen to whatever. I could listen to uh, Hendrix upstairs. Uh, you know, the wife. I'm not married, but if I had one, she could listen to Adele. What, the kids listening to the Smiths downstairs? Oh, that's what my kids would be listening to, yeah. the Smiths, baby. Yeah. That's exactly right. But uh, Sonos is pretty incredible. Uh, the design is awesome. Instead of having these giant speakers and uh, receivers, get rid of them because all you need is Sonos. One Sonos speaker sounds better than all that stuff. Um, and today we're talking about Rome. Sonos Rome is the ultra portable smart speaker that allows you to bring the Sonos experience everywhere you go. Rome weighs less than a pound and it's premium. Durable design makes it perfect for the home and for on the go. When you're home, Rome connects to your Wi-Fi network and the rest of your Sonos system and then automatically pairs with your phone on Bluetooth when you're on the go for a seamless experience. Using automatic true play tuning, Rome smartly adapts to your surroundings and whatever you're listening to and creates sound that's astonishingly detailed and perfectly balanced. Control Rome using the app, Apple AirPlay 2, or your voice with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. With Sonos, you can start with one speaker and expand your system over time, like I have. I have, I think, nine units, uh, nine devices. All Sonos speakers connect over Wi-Fi, so you can group speakers in different rooms and play music throughout your home. I can't tell you how much I love this enough. Try Sonos, and it's so easy, guys. You just go to Sonos, S-O-N-O-S dot -O com to learn more. That's Sonos dot com to learn more. Did David Hasselhoff really find you on a plane and discover you? That's how your acting career started. Is that really true? Because you read shit and you're right. like. That is really now, true. Now, I, I have this picture of him sitting in seat 3D. <laughs> and he's. No, he was on one of those Planet Hollywood planes. He was. Even better. <laughs> and you were on the plane. Yep. And he came up to you. Tell me the story. And he, um, he came up to me and he was like, I have this show and you would be perfect for it. And I wasn't even an actor. You know, I was a model. You hadn't and studied like, acting. You hadn't studied or you hadn't done anything. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. And, um, I mean, like I did, you know, like drama my senior year in high school and, you know, everybody said I was good at it and I made some people cry and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, you know, <laughs> 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 and so yeah he did and i was like oh that's very nice thank you very much i mean i didn't want to be rude i was like I'm, I'm actually not an actor and he was like well you should be and you know let me send you this stuff i was like oh no 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 it's okay no I'm sorry whatever and then um the people that i was with 
on the um, plane, one of them went in on an audition for the show that he was talking about. And he was like, you were with that girl. And she was like, yes. And, and get her in here. Can you bring her in here? And I went in and I got it. And you, you, kinda, you read, you read a scene with David. I think. Yes. Yes, I did. And it was I enough. It was enough. He looked at you. Did he tell you right then? This is yours. Mm-hmm. Were you scared out of your socks? Mm-hmm. You had never acted before. Now you're going to be on Baywatch nights. What the, what were you, how much preparation did you do and how, wh- how did you approach this? I mean, I just went in there and it was very Jimmy Stewart. I just knew my lines. So I didn't bump into the furniture and they liked it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but, the, but you know what? You'll love this story. Oh my God. You're going to love this. All right. And I've never it. told this story before. Good, okay. Good. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hang on. You are strap in for I'm this strap one. Strapping in, man. I'm, I got a seatbelt on my chair. There you go. All right. Okay. So when I was a model, um, and you know, going to clubs and bars and all that stuff, and it, it was so awesome. And there were so many creative and talented, gifted people, gifted. And one of the people that I knew was this, I mean, devastatingly handsome African American gentleman. And he was the drummer for Eric Clapton. Wow. And somehow we were all together one night and, you know, all of us were singing and all that kind of stuff. And he was like, you need to sing. And I was like, oh, thanks. You're so sweet. And he was, no, no, Angie, I'm serious. Like, you need to sing. He was like, you should come, you should come audition for Eric. And I was like, uh, okay. And he set up a time and he set up the studio and all that. And I didn't go. Uh-huh. What? And I didn't go because I was scared. And I was, you know, like, oh, my God, I, just, I didn't go. So I run into him about probably about a month later. And I've got some more experience under my belt. And I'm kind of like, oh, OK. And I walked up to him, you know, like a nonchalant, lackadaisical, young, stupid person does. And I was like, hey, you know, you know what? I'm, I'm ready to do that. Can you, can you reschedule it? And he just looked at me and he was like, no, that ship has sailed. And I mean, Whoa. when I said like, oh my God, I'm breaking out to sweat to the story. Oh my God. I was so embarrassed. Oh my God, my hands are shaking. I was so mortified. I was just, and you know what he said? He looked at me and he goes, you see, you, you know that feeling that you're feeling right now? And I went, yes. And he goes, don't ever feel it again. And I never have. In other words, you took the bull by the horns. You, you, you never missed an opportunity again when you had it. Never. Wow. How about that? He called you out on your shit and it changed you. Yeah, totally. If he wouldn't have done that that day, you think you'd have been doing the same shit? Probably. I mean, like I said, I think God's had a really big hand in my path. But I mean, can you believe how transformative, like what an incredible, and I've never seen him since. I don't remember his name. I would only know his face. He had the most handsome face. He had the, like the whitest, most perfect teeth. He was so beautiful. And like, I mean, you know that feeling you're feeling right now? Never feel it again. You know, that's on the same line. I mean, it's not the exact same thing, but they always say you don't change yourself a lot of times until you hit rock bottom or until your actions cause some kind of reaction that is devastating or you don't like about yourself that forces you to sort of make a difference, make a change in your life. Mm -hmm. And that Mm -hmm. one statement that he shot at you kind of made you go, whoa, what the fuck am I doing? That's crazy. That's amazing. Next time you meet him, you should tell him, uh, wow, you really helped me along my career. I know. I mean, but who knows if I'm ever going to see him. He was English, and that's all I know. You know that feeling you're having right now? Don't never ever, feel it again. Never feel it. Never effing feel it again. I'm like, what was that? It was like a weird Michael Caine something. What was <laughs> I doing? My engineer, Ryan, just looked at me like, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, but you you look at yourself after doing Baywatch Nights and then you start doing stuff. But then you look at your career. You look at your acting. Nominated for all these SAG awards for Law & Order. You, you know, resilient aisles. Like you really just like you, there had to be work. You had to put in a shit ton of work. What, what are you doing? 
Oh, now the rest of the picked us up. <laughs> oh, look at that. She's holding an award. What is that phallic-like award? Right? This is my People's Choice Award. Did you win for uh, Rizzoli? I did. Yes. Congratulations. How does that? How did that feel when you won an award? You want to know that story? That one was terrible. So, <laughs> so it was. <laughs> I can't believe you're getting me to tell all this. I love know, it. This is what it's about. I know, but like you know how private I am, and now you asshole, you got me telling everything. <laughs> this is fun. This is what people want to hear. They're gonna love you even more for like letting go a little bit. This is great. Well, you're gonna love this. So right. it was. People's Choice Awards, and um, it was the first day of my mediation in my divorce. So I was here in Charlotte, and um, I started like getting you know all these texts like, "Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations!" And you know, my best friend Monica <laughs> calls me and she's like, "You won!" And I'm like, oh, "What? What are you?" Ever a few curse words in there. I was like, no, I did. I'm on the phone with my lawyer. Leave me alone. And I hung up. And she calls me back and she's like, listen to me. You won. You won your category. And I'm like, I, no, I didn't. What's her face won? And, they, and, and I was like, no, I don't have time for this. I got to go. I'm talking about some serious crap here. You know, hang up. I mean, and, and when I tell you, like, my divorce was, it was devastating. I mean, I walked around with my Bible. I mean, it oh. was, you know. And so... <laughs> She calls me back. She goes, listen, you dumbass, go to the website and pull up your effing category and look at your effing picture because there is an effing banner that says winner across your effing face. For People's Choice Awards. I didn't even get to go. I wasn't even there. I didn't even get to do a speech. I didn't get to do anything. Oh my God. But that had to feel good during all that shit that you're dealing with to have a little acknowledgement, to have a little something like that. That's nice. Look at you. That's fantastic. Now, if one of the kids broke that, how would you respond? Well, I mean, I would kill them, of course, and I would go to prison. <laughs> what, what, what kind of uh, studying did you do, by the way, to, to prepare for these roles, to, to, to take it to the next step? Well, for Rizzoli, that was a blast because I went to Boston and hung out with all of the homicide detectives. And if I weren't an actor, then I would be a homicide detective. I mean, it's just, it's like the highest stakes, you know, puzzle solving. There's justice involved. You help people. You bring closure. You kill the mf -er that did whatever he did. I mean, like, <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God, I love it. And we had... We had one where, I mean, and I have to be honest, I mean, it was like, I was there for like three or four days before anything happened. And I called the detective that I was working with. And I was like, come on. I mean, like, I got to go in 48 hours. Like somebody's got to kill somebody somewhere. This is Boston. I mean, from what I understand, it happens a bit here. And, <laughs> and he was like, Harmon, I swear to God, he was, I don't think I've ever had anyone so anxious for murder. <laughs> it's like, I'm not trying to be mean spirited, but like, I don't have a lot of time here. Like I gotta go. <laughs> so sure enough, like 215 sirens. And I call him, I'm like, is that one? And he's like, yeah, it's one. I'm coming to pick you up. All right. So you're on a, what do they call it? A dry, what is it? A, a ride drive. along, ride along. A ride along, yeah. Ride along. And, but it was awesome. So we went, we got into this, well, I'll tell you about the, the, there were two. The second one, we were outside of the courthouse and this man had gone into court with these four people and they were fighting over something. I can't remember what. Well, when we found, when we got to him and in, he was still in his car with his foot on the brake and he had a gunshot wound to the neck and he just bled out all over the place. Wait, did you see so, this? Oh yeah. You saw him bleed out. No, no. We, I mean, well, I, he was dead when we got there. But you saw him dead. Oh, yeah. What was that like seeing a dead person? Weird question. I, I know, weird. Weird answer. I loved it. I mean, I loved it. You loved seeing someone dead. But that doesn't sound well, right. Not, I mean, it's not that I love. I was like, yay, he's dead. It's not like that. Right, right. I was like, oh, my God. How are we going to figure this out? What are we going to do? Right. This is amazing. You know, and oh my gosh. it was crazy all the stuff that they had to do because they couldn't move the car. Well, it's out here in public, so they had to tarp it. 
And then his foot was on the brake, so they really couldn't move it. So they had to wait to get a warrant. They had, I mean, to do all of the stuff just to get him still in the car in uh, back to the station and in the garage. And even then they couldn't take him out. And so we had, because they had to like process the scene and, they had, and the car was the scene. So like, we've got doors open, Jeez. we're walking all around, like we're not touching anything. Like it was, it was unbelievable. And then they would look at me they're like, Angie, what do you think? And I'd be like, this is incredible. They, they're like, no, like, what do you think happened? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they let me just be, just be involved. They were so great. I love Boston PD. They did, were. Did you have a lot of good answers? Were they surprised by some kind of, some, some of your responses? I don't think so. I think because I was just so in awe of them. I mean, it was like standing there with, you know, Batman and Robin and Wonder Woman and, you know, Aquaman and all of them. I was just like, what? Okay. Whatever you say. I mean, they were just so cool to me. And then we went upstairs and they had caught the people that did it. And it was a guy, like a kid, a kid, like 20s. Right. His mother, his girlfriend and a friend. So he re- they put it together, and when they had him in four separate rooms, and the detectives were going back and forth, and they literally had like the one hothead and the one calm guy. I mean, I was just like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <gasps> like it was, it was just incredible. And the one hothead guy, he was like, we gotta get this motherfucker and all that kind of stuff. And the other guy was like, if you go in there and make him take a powder test, they're going to be able to take it from you. And we've got nothing. You've got to calm down. You've got to get in there and convince him to like, it was incredible. Wow. He's out there throwing stuff. How long were you there for? How long were you in Boston just kind of studying this? Probably not long, a week. Yeah, like four four or five days. And that was that was enough to give you enough insight to take on this role and 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 have a certain seriousness to your role and like to play and really just well, and take it seriously. Where, but also that's where the the comedy came in because if you see the you know the pilot, <laughs> there, we don't really have a lot of comedy. But I will tell you, those guys are funny and they have to be in order to cope with what they're seeing and what they're doing. I mean, we're standing around a body and. You know, one of the guys is like, oh, God, I can't I can't get Jimmy to eat his broccoli. And the other one's like, oh, mine's failing science. And, you know, oh. and it's like you're standing there talking about all this normal everyday stuff. And you're like, did you notice I'm doing body? I mean, <laughs> it's a that's dead just body. Like, or, uh, anyone? You know, like, <laughs> you know and, that's, <laughs> and that's what they do. I mean, they've got to cope. So oh. it was, and that's kind of like I was like we gotta we gotta make this funny I mean it's gotta be and they're smart asses and they're tough people and they're you know it, it's yeah I, I, that would be a great job by the way I don't remember you ever posing completely off topic posing nude for Allure magazine well yeah because I'm covered like this yeah so you're not naked oh I'm naked well, well they don't you don't see you naked well, you see enough of me naked. What do you see? I didn't see anything. How, how did you not research this? You know to ask this question, but you don't know what the picture looks like? Touche. I didn't look because I thought it was disrespectful because we know each other. <laughs> may, may I, ma- ma'am, may I, may I have a look after the podcast is over? Michael, don't act like you haven't tried to get me naked for years. <laughs> oh, my God. I love you. I love her. You know what's funny is everybody who knows you always says, why don't you marry Angie Harmon? I'm like... Because she's she's a she's the next level up, man. I'm 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 a little. She'd have to look down, you know. And she's probably taller than me. I don't. How tall are you? Five nine and a half. No, oh, I'm taller than you. I'm six foot. Yeah, you are. Yeah. But we've determined this when we were in person. Yeah. By the way, and on that note, do you have uh, do you have people men hit on you quite often? Do I have what? Do you have men hit on you? I, I assume or women. Uh yeah. Actually, <laughs> well, to be honest with you, to be frank, I do. I have people hitting on me. Uh, <laughs> yes, I mean, don't you? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm oblivious to it, so I'm always like, "There's no way they're hitting on me, or there's no way they're flirting with me." There's no way. I'm, I'm kind of like that. You know, you said you had the pretty girl syndrome, where you're like, you don't think that you're pretty, but everybody thinks you're pretty, but you don't feel it. I've always yeah. dealt with that my whole life as well, so I, I know how you deal with that. But well, how do you? Would you go out with a commoner? 
<laughs> would you go out with oh, someone okay. who wasn't in the acting business, who wasn't, you know, loaded, who wasn't uh, just a regular good looking guy who was nice and you were attracted to? Yeah. You would. I think everyone, like, I mean, yeah, I, that's, it's so funny that you bring that up because, like, we've, this has really been a topic as of late. Like, yeah, I mean, I would love to find my person. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I would like to and find yeah, my person. Like, well, and a lot of people, you know, is, I mean, you should hear the lists in this. I mean, I, I just want a nice person. With a pulse. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I'm good. All right. I mean, I'm enough for both of us. All you got to do is sit there and hang on and we're going to have some fun. Don't worry about it. By the way, we talk about like, you know, people coming up to you a lot, but do you ever have any weird fans or, or anybody who ever harass you or anything like that? I remember you had someone. No, totally. You have had that. That's got to be the worst, especially for a woman, right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, recently we just had one um, and Actually, a, a, you know, a girl who's now a friend of mine, I did not know her at the time. Um, I was sitting at the bar and this guy comes over and he's totally hammered and just wasn't getting the, uh -huh, yeah, you know, because we, we as women, we're, we're taught like we have to be nice and we have to be respectful and we have to be sweet. And if we're not, we're a bitch. So you can't tell some guy to go F himself because you want to just hang with your girlfriends and then, you know, also when he's drunk and he, if he's too stupid to pick up on the please get the hell away from me vibe, who knows what he's going to do when you tell him, you know, to go after himself. himself. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so this couple on the other side of the bar, is that, are we okay here? Yeah, you're great. Halo. Okay. This couple on the other side of the bar, I did not know. And she, like, and the husband, they were looking at me and they're like, are you Okay. And I was like, it's, you know, thanks so much. And this guy wouldn't stop. So she gets up and comes all the way over and goes, gets right in between us and does the, oh my God, how are you? I haven't seen you in so long. Oh my God, I've missed you. Hugs my neck. And I'm like, I love this woman and we must instantly be friends. Helped you out. And yeah. And did the whole thing. It was like, come, I got married. Come meet my husband. And so we went over there and met them and just had a blast with them. And then this douche comes around the bar and like starts up again and starts giving me the stink eye because oh, I didn't want anything to do with them. So the husband like was like, you know what? Let's go have a chat. And like took him over to the other side of the bar and like had a chat with him on my behalf. And they, ne they'd never even met me before. And did the guy F off finally? Yeah. Jeez. People don't know when to just F off. Yeah, I mean, and he, like, he kept, like, giving me dirty looks. And I was like, come on, bro. I mean, A, do you have mirrors in your house? Let's just start there. And B, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe take an etiquette class or some sort of, you know, how to pick up women kind of thing. Yeah, because women or, love when you just stare at them. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I, I just, in, a, in, in a menacing way. Yeah, I mean, if you just give a little glance and you lock eyes, you get a smile, hi, you know, whatever, a smile, and then fuck off. And then maybe 10 minutes later, you kind of look up and she's looking. There's like little things along the way. And that's fun. That's fine, but like just creepy stares, man. This is called I mean, shit talking with Angie Harmon. I'm going to ask you some <laughs> fan questions from my patrons. Uh, you can a answer them as fast or as slow as you want. Leanne P., the last few characters you played have been law enforcement. Do you enjoy this genre, or would you consider acting in different ones? I mean, you are, obviously are because you're doing Lifetime stuff and you're doing other things, but um, you love that side of it, don't you? I really do, um, and I'm blessed to have a niche, if you will, a niche, if you will. Yeah. Um, but I will say my new one, um, Barstow, the one that we're in pre-production now, I am so excited to play her. It's kind of like, you know, in Yellowstone, you pull for the family, even though they're not the most moral and ethically sound people. Right. And, you know, they make decisions that are like, Ugh, that was harsh. <laughs> yeah. and Barstow, my character, Hazel, is the same way. And you find yourself pulling for her and for these characters that she's with, you know, because her main concern is just protecting her daughter. And obviously I can, you know, touch into a little bit of that personally. But um, yeah, I'm. Uh, this is this is my baby that I've been working on for almost three years now. What's it and called? Really, What's it called? 
Barstow. Barstow. And when's it come out? I don't. We're in pre-productions right now. We're on um, script drafts, things like that. Um, looking for a director. We're supposed to be sort of maybe putting an offer out maybe tomorrow or Monday for a director. And oh, I love it so. You much. go, girl. Uh, Maya P. What types of projects do you hope to develop with your new deal with Lifetime? Um, there's three that I'm directing and producing. One that I'm directing and starring in. Um, and yeah, that's, I think I was so just flattered by Lifetime and Tanya, um, because she knew that I needed to stay home for my girls. And so she's trying to make it as easy as possible for me to do that and continue to work. Janine R. What, what charity or charities do you support? How can we help? Oh my gosh. I love you. Um, let's see. Um, 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 okay. Obviously UNICEF, um, the Exodus chapter, um, and, and basically anything, you know, that tugs at your heartstrings or whatever, but, um, what kind of tugs at mine, um, is animals and, uh, child mm. and human trafficking. You've got a big effing dog. <laughs> yes, I do. Benjamin, he's awesome. Benjamin's a giant. <laughs> and, and all of mine are rescues. Good. I mean, mine too. Although one, one, one of them passed away a couple months ago. Boy, that, that was the hardest. Have you had to deal with that before? Um, we just had to deal with the girl's childhood dog and doing that. Were they a mess? Yeah, they, uh, they were, but then, you know, they kind of, I, I was surprised at how resilient they were. The adults were definitely a lot more torn up than the kids. Well, this has been an absolute joy. I mean, you you know, you are, you have an electric personality. Like I remember meeting you and your ex and then we were at we were some place and then you guys came to my 80s party and I threw a big <laughs> 80s party and you came and you were all decked out. You looked fantastic. I got to find those pictures. Do you still have the pictures? Totally. It's on my Instagram. Really? Yes. Oh, I think it is. But it's, it's I totally. mean, you're just, I, I don't know how, I mean, you can, you don't have to be single is what I'm saying. There's a million guys that would marry you in a heartbeat anybody who's ever met you who knows you who even watches this interview will see that you're full of life and you know i just appreciate you coming on here and talking to me i know you were a little scared but didn't it did you have fun i i always have fun with you you know that yeah I did. and i am scared because you know how private i am and you know it's just like <gasps> but i don't think yeah i don't think you got i don't think you got too private i think you said i'm not going to go there and you just like hinted a little, little things but you didn't you didn't go anywhere but you gave enough to where you know, you could tell when things, you know, what you were passionate about and whatever. I, I thought I, w I thought it was great. Ryan, how did you feel about this? I thought it was great. You put, maybe you put your lips on the microphone. I thought it was great. <laughs> and he was laughing a couple you, times. You, you made him laugh, so that was good. Well, listen, I love you. I love you. And um, I might have you do a little... A, a little, a little uh, video of you saying that you're going to be on the podcast when it comes out and you'll post something or whatever. I absolutely will. Uh, I love you. Thank you for doing this. I'll be in touch. And uh, I had a I had a blast. And I Always. hope to meet those girls sometimes. Maybe on Facetime or something. You could introduce me to them. I'm telling you, you got to come out here while they're in school. Like you will literally just be like, "This is unbelievable. This shit show is just nuts." Is Charlotte fun? Is it a good town? Is it's it so fun? Oh my god, we have great food. We have great bars. Everybody like loves to have a good time and drink. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm there. I'll come out. Dude, I'll come out. I will. I'll stay I'm for a couple serious. days. All right. I'm serious too. Let's okay. I'm All, right. Let's All right. All right. Love I your love face. You. All right. Love you too. I really enjoyed listening to Angie. She's uh she's sweet as hell and she's got a lot to talk about. And uh, you know, she's a single mom of, of you know, three daughters, and uh that's that's a lot. But yeah. she seems like she's just the best friend. See, my parents weren't best friends with me. They mm. weren't my friends at all. Mm. They didn't want to be my friends. They didn't want to listen to me. <laughs> but we don't need to get into that. Uh, thank you, Ange, for, for being on here. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, if you like the podcast, please subscribe. Write a review on Spotify, Apple. Go to YouTube. You can watch it and then write a review. It's, it's easy. And if you like it, maybe take the time out to do it. Our handles, if you want to follow us on the Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Ryan. Uh, at Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast, Instagram, and Facebook. That's exactly right. 
So do it. And also, if you want to join Patreon, go to patreon.com slash inside of you. All my lovely patrons are there. They support the podcast so much. And there's a lot of perks where I send packages to them and this and that. And uh, if you join Patreon, I'll send you a message as soon as I can, as soon as I see it. Uh, also, if you want to watch the band January 29th, we're playing. You can watch us virtually from your own home on the TV or on your computer. Um, just go to sunspin.com and... Uh, you know, you can find a link where we're playing and um, great prizes, Zooms. Uh, you can go to stageit.com as well. So join us. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you if you haven't heard us yet, we play some covers. We play originals. We're working on a, a new album. Uh, it's a 45-minute jam session. Album? It's just fun. Oh. No, I mean the, the actual stage. It. Yeah. So I think you'll enjoy it. So I, I really do. Um, so we have a lot of great supporters and I, you know, I could see your names as they scroll up and I'll give you shout outs and all that stuff. It's fun to see. And Oh, look, it's a newbie. Hey, uh, Scott from Wisconsin, Scott 69 from Wisconsin. I don't know, but you see their, their handle and you just, you know, whatever. Also the inside of you online store has a bunch of great stuff. Um, Lexmas scripts signed by me, uh, small of a lunch boxes, tumblers inside of you, just a bunch of stuff. So go to the inside of you online store, get those while they last. And, uh, I want to read off the top patrons because that's what we do here on the show. That is what we do. These are people who, uh, give back to the show in more, more ways than one and really go above and beyond expectations. So it's pretty crazy. And I can't wait to, um, uh, announce some mm. good news. Oh, but I can't do it yet because we, you know, I think we're going to do it in the trades or you know something. We're going to announce it, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. I should just blurb it out. But it's something really cool. So keep listening for that. And uh, here we go. Here we freaking go. These are the top patrons. Here we go. Nancy D, Leah S, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W. Kristen K, Amelia O, Allison L, Raj C, CJP, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jen S, Jamal F, Janelle B, Adrian M, Mike E, Eldon Supremo, 99 More, Ramira, Santiago M, Chad W, Leanne P, Janine R, Maya P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Chris H, Dave H, Spider Man Chase, Sheila G. Correct. This is just mm -hmm. random Ryan. I'm just doing a random Ryan. I'm picking it up. B Brad B B Brad D, Ray H, Tabitha T, Tom N, Liliana A, Michelle K, Talia M, Betsy D, Laura L, Chad L, Rochelle, Nathan E, Marion, Meg K, Trav L, Dan N, Big Stevie W, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Super Sam, Coleman G, Dev. Nixon. Dev Nixon is correct. You tired, Ryan? Uh, no, what? I'm good. Michelle A, Jeremy C, Cody... Cody R, Sebastian K, Gavin Nader. That's correct, Gavin Nader. David C, John B, Brandy D, Yavor, Camille S, The C, Joey M, Willie F, Christina E, Adelaide N, Omar I, Lena N, Eugene and Leah, Chris P, Nikki G, Corey, Patricia, Maria N, Heather L, Jake B, Bobbit. Bobbit's a new one. Bobbit? Bobbit. Bobbit. Ed A. Twist it. Abel A. No, Ed A, Abel F. Abel, sorry about that. Abel F and Tony G. Yes. Uh, actually, Abel had a question for one of my last guests, which which will air soon. You see, if you're a patron, yeah. you get to ask questions sometimes. So it's pretty neat. Anything you want to tell well, me, Ryan? Was it was Abel's question? Uh, I was wondering if after all these years, you'd like to meet what <laughs> Adele? Oh no, I said huh. Abel. Huh. Or is it Abel? Maybe it's, her name is Abel. As in Kane and? I think it's Abel. It's A B E L. It's Abel. It's Abel. Did I say Abel? Yeah. Okay. Well, Abel F. I apologize. It's Abel. You're mm -hmm. Abel. You're Abel F. Abel, Abel AF. AF. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> idiots. We're just idiots. Christ. Uh, thanks for listening uh, to us babble here. I appreciate it. Uh, continue to listen to the podcast. We love you from uh, the Hollywood Hills in California. I'm Michael Rosenbaum. I've been Ryan Taylor. And uh, get a little wave to the camera. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Be good to yourselves. And uh, I'll see you very soon. <laughs>